Who needs to train character lorers when you can just provide images for multiple character consistency? Welcome to Phantom, Subject Consistent Video Generation via Cross Modal Alignment, or Svgmkmak for short. Okay, maybe that acronym doesn't really work, but their character consistency does work pretty well. Their new release is a 14B model, but they do have a 1.3B version too, which even works on 8GB VRAM cards. They provide some example videos, and as you can see, it isn't just characters, but any type of image you can provide. Want this outfit? Sure. Maybe a specific background? Not a problem. You can run it using their code, but as it's now supported natively in Comfy UI, let's take a look at getting it set up in there. The amazing Kijai has provided all the extra files you'll need in one place. And there you can see the various Phantom WAN models going from 30 gig all the way down to just 2.87. So pick the one that's best for you. I've got a 3090, so I went with the FP8 version. Download two diffusion models as normal, and we'll be using that as a drop-in replacement for the WAN vase image to video template we saw last week. Do check out that video if you're looking for more information on vase. Another file you'll probably want to take a look at is the ACVID LoRa. Why? Well, it's a bit like CauseVid in that you can use fewer steps, but in this case it's 10 rather than 2 to 4. Still, I've been using them together because I'd like to experiment. The ACVID repo for WAN has some more information, and over in files and versions if we check the license, ah, that's Apache, so we should be good to go. I'll be using a modified version of the WAN vase image to video template. Just as a quick reminder, you can go to workflows, browse templates, go to video, and then WAN vase image to video. So that gives you that template. You can download the files if you're missing them. And the stuff I've taken out is this first frame and all this 1.3B stuff. So it's just a 14B loader, the sampler and save video. Okay, so a standard WAN vase and cause vid load. And this time, of course, I've thrown in the ACVID LoRa as well, strength one. Now, it does seem to help a little bit with the first frame, but you can use it by itself as well. So yeah, experimentation, eh? For the prompt, I'm describing my character. I'll show you the image in a moment. Uh, it's a woman wearing a blue hat and a brown jacket, and I want her eating spaghetti in a posh London restaurant. That's the reference image I'm using, so there she is with her hat and jacket. Going through WAN vase to video like we saw last week with six steps, this one took a little over three minutes for the five second 480p video. It's not bad, as you can see, there she is eating some pasta, but I did kind of ask for her to be inside a restaurant. Enter Phantom, much the same as with vase. Only this time I'm loading the Phantom FP8 model. I've also got the Course Vid and ACVID as well. Another change is in place of the WAN Vase to Video node, there is now a WAN Phantom Subject to Video node. This is new to Comfy UI, so you'll need to make sure you're using the very latest release. This is the one I'm using for these tests. If you're not using a normal install like I am here, maybe you've gone for a portable or the so-called desktop app, then you may have to wait a bit for updates and your version numbers may vary. Anyway, there's two different options for using this because as you can see, it outputs three sets of conditioning. So you could just use two of those outputs. Here, we're ignoring the negative image text output and the result looks fairly good. Actually a bit faster than vase, here taking two and a half minutes versus three minutes, but there are also some other important differences with Phantom. First up, it's 24 FPS rather than 16, so the resulting video in this case is of course a bit shorter than vase because I'm still sending it just 81 frames. Secondly, Phantom also prefers horizontal 480p video like this one here, over vertical formats. The video looks okay, apart from maybe the hand, but that's par for the course these days. The main thing is, of course, she's now inside a restaurant. The other option is to use all three of those conditioning outputs with a dual CFG guider. Now, even with CFG1, this took over seven minutes to generate for, well, a roughly similar output. Here they are together, and for me, I certainly prefer it taking two minutes over having to wait for seven.
OK, how about if we give Vase another go, but this time we wipe out the background. I'm using ByRefNet2, as you can see from the node labels. This gives the foreground part of the image on a white background, just like we saw in the examples on the Phantom GitHub page. This time Vase has done much better. It's even got a single Big Ben. Nice. That helped Vase, but how did Phantom do? Well, not bad. The funny hand is still there, there's a mirror, the outside has changed a bit, still fairly similar to how it was before. For the triple conditioning, I dropped it to four steps for speed and the result was still okay, though certainly missing some of those details. Is Vase better than Phantom? Who really knows at this point? But take a look at something you might not have noticed yet. Yes, with Phantom, she's on the right hand side, but with Vase, her position seems more aligned to that of the reference image. Time to play around a bit then, two characters this time, and as Vase doesn't really like it when you send in more than one image, I'm concatenating them into a single one. There you can see 1371 by 768. Because there's a lot of white space in this image, I'm also cropping that one down, so 768 by 768 square, and the image concatenate I'm using is from KJ Nodes. As there are two characters, I've updated the prompt. So now to her left, a tall, slender gentleman wearing a dark cap with a dark ruffled period costume should be there reading a book. With Vase, oh yes, as you can see, suspicions confirmed. It really does matter where you position the things in there. As you can see, the guy is there, which is where he was on the concatenation. And we've also got another guy who's reading the book, so it's got very mixed up. Phantom, however, has done much better. The positions are correct. There's the guy reading the book and he's to her left. The dual CFG version, I think, is a bit worse, mostly because of his hand there. So very similar, but mm, not really feeling it. Now let's add a background for Giggle. So this time I've got three images in total and I'm using the image concatenate multi once again from KJ nodes because you can just select the input count. That's the preview for the image going in. As you can see, it's getting very wide now. With three images comes an updated prompt for, well, all three images. So on the right, I've got the trench coat woman. On the left, I've got the woman with the extravagant hair. And there's a very brief description of the kitchen. Predictably enough, Wan Vase has got a bit confused there. We can see the sort of original kitchen on the right hand side and it's tried to make something up. So the cooker's there, but now it's on the left. The characters it hasn't done too bad with, but overall it's a bit messed up. With Phantom, oh, okay, that's different. The kitchen is looking really weird still. And the second character is, well, totally wrong. Is it doing worse? Is Phantom rubbish? Well, let's take another look at that one Phantom subject node. Ah, uh, yes, the input says images. So let's do that instead. Now, it may look like there's lots of things going on here, but essentially all we're doing is creating an image batch with three individual images. The thing is, when creating an image batch, the first image determines the size of all the other images. And for my input images, I've deliberately picked three different, very difficult sizes. So this one's landscape 1344 by 768. This one's 480 by 832, and then the background is 1024 by 720. The image resize nodes don't really do the job. As you can see, those aren't square. So image pad for outpaint target size, once again from KJ nodes, adds either the vertical or horizontal padding that you need to make the images square. And here in the preview, you can see all three images and can click on that one. There you go, one out of three. So one, two, three separate images going in. My prompt for this one is even more precise. And when you are doing prompting, it's best to be as detailed as possible, describing each of your characters or objects. A good prompt can really make all the difference. Given the speed and quality of just replacing the WAN vase node with this WAN phantom subject of video node, I've removed all the other bits for comparison, giving us this clean phantom workflow. Yes. All you need to change from the template is that one node. I've taken the trim out as well, just because I like to be neat and tidy. As you can see, the result there is far better. The kitchen background looks great, and we've got both characters in there. No character lauras or complex regional prompting needed. 
If you want to do three characters, you do it in much the same way. This time I've replaced the kitchen with a female rodent lassie, updated the prompt to describe all three. So there, the cute rodent lass is wearing a red headband and all the other stuff she's got on. And for the background, I've invented a haunted house room with the result being all three characters together in that room. I've also upped the frames on this one to 121, so it gives a full five seconds at 24 FPS. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way. 